The wake-up call from the mosque echoes across the Marta Pora River, glittering in the bright sunlight at the start of a new day. Banjar Masin, the capital of South Kalimantan, is crisscrossed by 80 winding rivers, but the Marta Pora River is considered to be the mother river. Stilt houses dominate the landscape above the river, where wooden boats are the most important means of transportation. Because of the watery environment, Banjar Masin is known as the Venice of Asia. Kalimantan is the third largest island in the world and the largest in Indonesia. The sea and the island are their whole world. Indonesia is surrounded by the Pacific and Indian Oceans and consists of over 18,000 islands. The mysterious Kalimantan Island is covered by a tropical rainforest, giving it an air of primitive mystery. The Martapora River flows deep in the rainforest. The Martapora River is important in local trade. Wooden boats loaded with fresh fruit, vegetables, fish, and shrimp gather from all directions at the floating market around 5 a.m. every morning. Nurhar Saner, a 52-year-old fruit trader, lives in the middle reaches of the river next to the floating market. Every morning, she sits at her door and bargains for fresh fruit. Along with the other middlemen, she then transfers her purchases to ships that will carry them to faraway retail land markets. Today's purchases were far from ideal, so she decides to check her orchard. It's the rainy season, and the weather is unpredictable. She applies a mixture of rice flour and water to her face to prevent sunburn. This natural sunblock was invented by local people and makes this mysterious island seem even more primitive. Nurhar Saner bought about 250 kilos of oranges and bananas today, which is just the start of her working day. She neatly piles the fruit to make it look more attractive. But the strong sunlight tends to wilt the leaves, which lowers the price of the fruit. The faster it reaches the market, the more she will get for it so the whole family helped load the fruit onto the boat. The already bustling market is five kilometers away from her home. 
because of the hot weather, the market doesn't get really busy until dusk. Nurhar Saner's oranges are popular today. Locally produced star fruit, durian, jackfruit, rambutan, and sweet sop are inexpensive. One basket of fresh oranges only costs about two and a half U.S. dollars. It's often near dawn before Nurhar Saner finishes selling her fruit. She usually sleeps a while at the market before going home. But she finishes a little earlier than usual because tomorrow is the weekend and she has some important business. She hasn't seen her youngest son for a week, but he's coming home from college for the weekend. Few people in Banjar Masson get such an opportunity, so the whole family is proud of him. He is a very considerate son who helps his mother with housework as soon as he gets home. Nurhar Saner asks him about his life at college. The people here live simple lives. They have a bowl of heavily spiced vegetables and a plate of curry chicken for lunch. Nurhar Saner hopes her youngest son will get a good job in Jakarta when he graduates next year. But the boy doesn't want to leave home. The whole family fervently prays that all their dreams will be realized soon. The tempestuous Martapora River flows into the vast ocean. The equator runs through Indonesia, which has 81,000 kilometers of coastline. The lives of the local people are tied to the water that surrounds them, both for their livelihood and their sense of identity. Villagers in the small fishing village in the suburb of Surap Ayer make their living from traditional fishing. Rumbian prays at set times whenever he's home. Fishing is a tough, dangerous job, so he hopes that Allah hears his prayers and blesses him. After lunch, he gets a hard-earned rest. He used his fishing money to build a house for his three school-aged children two years ago. He hopes they'll all go to college someday. He works hard every day to catch as many fish as he can to ensure they have a good future.
At dusk, Rumbian takes a two or three hour trip to reach his fishing spot at sea. He has a bucket with five kilos of ice ready to keep the shrimp he catches fresh. An ice factory in the village provides cheap ice for the villagers. winds on the Indian Ocean in January and February whip up the waves, causing problems for small fishing boats. Two men usually work on a boat and share the risks and the profits. It's a good day for fishing. Rumbian casts his net. After about 20 minutes, the wind picks up, so the men quickly haul in the net. Rumbian is surprised and upset that the net is empty. The price of diesel has gone up dramatically in recent years, increasing his overhead. He decides to try his luck further out to sea. The coastal residents depend on the sea for everything. People in the cities preserve fish and shrimp by preparing traditional Indonesian shrimp chips. Indonesians love shrimp chips, produced in the coastal city of Surabaya. Forty-two-year-old Kasai Ri runs a shop making traditional shrimp chips. He's proud to continue the tradition of his forebearers. He took over the shop from his grandfather at the age of 18. Every day of the year, he gets up at 4 a.m., starts work at 5.30, puts the shrimp chips out to dry at 11, collects them at 2 p.m., and finishes work at 5 p.m. The coastal residents depend on the sea for everything. People in the city preserve fish and shrimp. He and his 10 workers produce 250 kilos of shrimp chips a day. For a small shop like this, drying the chips in the sun is the ideal method. Ten kilometers away is a modern factory that uses modern technology to produce shrimp chips. Marina Urser, Yu Woa Nu, 22 years old, has been working here for a year. From 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., she works as quality inspector on the production line, sorting through five tons of shrimp chips a day. Using a large-scale dryer working 24-7, the factory's daily output is 200 times that of Kasai Ri's shop. Modern technology is rapidly taking the place of traditional family shops. People with Kasairi skill may soon be a thing of the past. The morning shrimp chips are quickly hardened in the sun. Kasairi is tending the chips that haven't dried enough.
but the weather is very changeable. A storm is coming. Gus Irie firmly believes that the best shrimp chips are handmade. Since his workshop has a small sales volume, he is sometimes forced to take commissions from the large factories. It only takes five minutes to ride a motorcycle from the workers' dormitory to the factory. Urser's uniform bears the slogan, I give 100% of my heart to Indonesia. She loves her factory as much as she loves her country. Young people are proud to work at a large modern enterprise. Motorcycles are very popular in Indonesia. Hordes of motorcycles can be seen racing around big cities like Jakarta, Bandung, and Yogyakarta, as well as in small villages. Indonesia's many islands are crisscrossed by rivers, making boats an essential mode of transport. Jam Hori I Jam is a boatman on the Martapura River. He gets up at 4 a.m. to transport passengers, fruit and grain, up and down the river. Most of his clients are regulars, and he gets along well with all of them. I Jam's boat is used as a water taxi by local residents. He is busiest from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m after which he usually goes home to eat. It's Sunday, and iJam's eldest daughter, Rusita, is doing her homework. She's a diligent first grade student who enjoys sitting on the porch to study. Her dream is to become a teacher, a respectable profession in the region. iJam has a special task today, so he leaves home earlier than usual. He's going to pick up a bride in his boat today, a girl from the village. A traditional wedding ceremony is underway. The bridegroom's father dips a coconut leaf in water and sprinkles water on his son's head and shoulders to bless him and ensure his safety. He throws rice at his son as he leaves, while the other relatives cheer and offer their best wishes.
everything is ready. iJam takes the bridegroom to the bride's home, 20 minutes away down the same river. I jam waits silently behind the noisy crowd during the celebration. As night falls, he heads home exhausted after taking the last group of guests home. As the new day dawns, iJam begins ferrying passengers and freight as usual. Sometimes when she sees her father's boat approaching a bridge, she stops and waits for it. iJam's daughter is his pride and hope for the future. He works hard to make a better life for his family and help his daughter fulfill her dreams. Indonesia, a country with thousands of islands and a long history, has many ethnic groups and religions, each having its own distinctive culture. The batik fabric, wood carvings, and folk music are among the country's most special products. Please join us for part three of Glamorous Indonesia. <laughs>